everybody, it's Anne. I'm back. Yes, I have one eye done and I have some foundation on. No, I haven't done my eyebrows. This is the start of my cream products um, series that I wanted to do. I've been playing with cream products now off and on since I was a kid, actually. Because at the time, I really got started doing makeup when I was in my early teens. There was a lot of cream makeup in the cheap seats. Mostly because the late 60s, if you wanted something brightly colored, it was more than likely going to be a cream. If you wanted something shiny, it was more than likely going to be a cream. Thank you, Max Factor. <laughs> Go look it up if you don't believe me. Plenty of research on it. Anyway, I've got one eye done. And what I have used is a kind of collection of things. A lot of it's Elf. Some of it is Space Case Cosmetics. This came out of my very first Ipsy. This one's called Alien Love Child. It's their purpley thing. But it's really not that hard to work on your face and your eyes with creams. They just take a little practice. Not like powder needs any practice or anything. No, oh, never. Let's get started and see if we can't figure out how to do this one. Since I did this one. And now I just got to remember everything I did so I can do this one. Okay. I actually started off trying to get my mirror reset here just a little bit. I started off with my Ruby Kiss eye primer. Now, sometimes I don't bother with an eye primer when I'm doing the creams. I just don't always bother. But for some reason, today was the day. And then I took my Elf Soft Beige and laid it in up here. Kind of doing a transition, but only kind of. Put the lid back on. Pick up my brush. Make sure I've got the correct side. And just kind of Spread that out a little. Now, the brushes I use mostly when I'm doing this are the ones that are pretty much dedicated to creams. And it's like I'm using concealer brushes, and there are a few brushes that, that you can find that are that specifically say cream shadow. A lot of times I use my fingers for things. It depends. Once I get that spread out a little bit, I pick up my Molten Liquid Eyeshadow by Elf. Elf, Elf, my friend Elf. This one's in brushed copper. And I stick it over here.
And then I pick up that brush that I used just a minute ago, because when I did the other eye, I did this too. I just flipped it over and spread out this part. And then drug a little down here. Just for the heck of it. And then, now, some of this we're getting into the quote unquote tricky part. I'm just going to tell you it's the tricky part. None of this is really the tricky part. Now I've got my Alien Love Child, which is a really pretty purple with a blue shift, and it's gorgeous. And just going to start right there where that burnt copper left off and start heading for the side. Now, when I first start putting it on, I'm doing quite a bit of just slide. As I get closer to the outer corner, I'm doing a lot more just padding. So that it gets gradually darker. Now, see, I didn't like creams that much when I first started using them back in the day. Because back in the day, I was a greasy-faced teenager. Let me tell you about greasy-faced teenagers and cream makeup. They don't work. Not well, anyway. Anyway, now we have the Elf No Budge Stick Shadow in Blue Steel. And I'm yes, I haven't finished with the purple, but I'm going to put the corner darkener in like that. Bring that down just a little bit. And oh, this is a pointy brush thing. This is one of my larger pencil brushes. And mostly it's just to get it into the correct shape. Because what I'm going to do is pick up that alien love child up a bit more of it and kind of layer it so that it's not quite as stark a transition. And then I'm going to pick up that brush again and keep mixing. Now, like usual, I've gotten a bit more on one eye than I have on the other. Let me just transfer some of that.
All right. Now, I've got a pale purple pencil. It says it's lilac. And I went on the lower water line and into the lower lash line just a hair, right at the base of the lashes. Yes, my concentration phase. And took a shiny white pencil. This one's kind of a white glitter. I've got a solid white, but it's more of a matte. And I just put a little bit of that into the inner corner because I'm doing this with as much cream product as possible. So I'm not going to be getting a cream high, a, a powder highlight out. So there's my brow bone. Done with that same shimmery pencil. Now, I'm going to pull Elf Blush Cream. Wet and Wild Bronzer Cream. Wet and Wild Highlight Cream. So, no, I have not powdered down my face. Buffing brushes. All right. Start doing the face warm up. You don't need a lot, and you don't necessarily have to do a contour if you don't want to. You can do the bronzer and let it roll. Now, some people are going to look at me funny anyway because I'm doing a cream and it's we're getting into hot weather. See, I'm also tra trying out something. I got this by way of information from Angie from 4F Beauty. And this is a sweat controller cream. It's basically an antiperspirant for your face and your hands and that kind of thing if you've got a lot of problem with, you know, not being able to keep from getting overly dewy. And with me, overly dewy happens a lot. I've got fibromyalgia. It makes it difficult to regulate your own body temperature. It really does. It will mess with your internal controls. It also is one of the reasons this eye is running like a faucet 
all by itself without its little neighbor. Okay, there's my break line for the contour. Used a little bit more of the bronzer. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Kind of contour my little nose a little bit. I'm using the Elf serum foundation in light. I like the serum foundation. I have a problem with some of the e.l.f. stuff though because their shade line is just so puny. It works great on my skin. But then I am like almost as pale as the handle of the brush. All right. And then this is in soft peach. This is the Elf Cream Foundation, which it's another thing that I absolutely am delighted with. But you really don't need much of this. Yeah, we really don't. I basically just tap the brush in a little bit. When I start seeing some pink on the bristles, I'm done. And if you don't think I'm kidding, if you think I'm kidding, there you go. That was just barely showing any pink on the bristles. Now, see, when I was growing up and first started noticing people doing makeup, my grandmother, my mom's mom, always wore makeup when she was going to work. She worked at Woodward and Lothrop in Old Town Alexandria, also known as Woody's at the time. And she was a custom shoe fitter for people with some medical issues and she fit corrective shoes and she specialized in kids. Now at the time that she was working there, they expected all of their service personnel to wear a black dress with a white collar or a black dress with a string of white pearls or you know white beads simple classy but you also had to have your face done it had to be done because they expected you to look better than presentable you had to show your professional appearance at all times. Well, one of the big things, it was a department store. One of the big, big departments they had was makeup. Now, when my grandma did her blush, she had those little pots about the size of this. Bright red rouge. Bright red. And she would take those little pots and she would open it up. And until it got down below far enough that she couldn't do it, she would just take that little pot and go squunk on her cheek and then smear it out. Because that one little partial twist was just enough color. Once she spread it out, it looked great. I'm still jealous of that bit. She had that stuff down pat. Okay, highlight. 
like the highs. Just kind of carry that up and around. Now, if you want this to bling, you're going to have to build it up some. Not that big a deal. Just layer it on a little bit. This is much easier to get on the Cupid's bow. It just is. And I've got, see, I love this brush. I got this brush from AOA Studio, and it's perfect for doing, you know, like these little angles in here, trying to do highlighters and such. And it comes with a, this is a $2 set. So you've got you know, similar angles, different sizes, so that you can get into other spaces. And this one fits my nose really nicely. Yes, I know. I haven't done my eyebrows. Keep your shirt on. I haven't completely forgotten. My favorite elf eyebrow pencil. Yes, believe it or not, the eyebrows are growing in pretty nicely, but I was born blonde, okay? I spent the first two years of my life with hair so pale, people thought I was bald. There's some of my eyebrow hairs that still remember that code. Some of my eyebrow hairs have decided, in the meantime, as my hair got darker over the years, some of them got red gold, some of them went dark brown. Now, my dad, my dad was born a towhead. His hair went jet black. I mean, we're talking the classic black kelt, jet black hair, and blue eyes. Yeah, daddy was pretty. His dad had violet eyes. I'm still PO'd I didn't get them. You know, come on, come on. Yes, I like my blue eyes, but granddaddy had violet. I want a violet. And my sister ended up with red hair with copper streaks in it. So it was an auburn with copper streaks and green eyes. And my blue eyes went with blonde hair that went from white to about the time I was 15, 16. It was kind of a honey blonde. And then by the time I got to about 25, it was what the Victorians used to call light mouse. Also known as dishwater blonde. And then it got a little bit darker and it became dark mouse. 
which is kind of like what I've got in the roots up here. What I've got growing in on the sides, after I've pretty much shaved my head down, it comes in real dark along the sides until it's been out in the sun for a while, and then it starts to lighten up. Getting ready to dye this again, because it's time, because I got way too much root. Way too much root. Anyway, if once you get finished putting all of this stuff on, you still feel a little bit tacky, go ahead and put powder over it because you would not have set your foundation down with powder before you did all the rest of your cream products. Now, I know some people have managed to layer cream products and powders repeatedly. However, they are usually working for the circus and they are clowns. And they're using really, really heavy stuff. <laughs> you know, the, the, the like bright white stick cream makeups. And you powder it, and then you do it again. And then you powder it, and then you do it again. And then you spray it with Arid Extra Dry so it doesn't ever move and you don't sweat it off. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to put my eyeliner on. Don't mind me, my hands are shaking. This is just a basic LA Colors liquid. Left eye looks really gnarly because of the shaky hand thing. Plus, like I remind people, I take my glasses off when I'm doing this because of the reflection. So, since I don't have contacts and that kind of thing, I can't even use like those little glasses that you can do the flip up thing because of the reflection. If I drop a lens down on this side so I can do this eye, you're going to get nothing but glare back. Now, I'm trying out this Wet n Wild Max Volume mascara because if you are familiar with the bad gal bang this has got a very similar wand it's got that flexy thing going on and the shape is about the same i don't know about the formula yet we'll see i have found with some of the wet and wild mascaras you kind of have to get them open, get some air in them, and then they thicken up a little bit more and perform better. Do, do, do. Anyway, I like the wand. We're just messing with the formula now. See what happens. Got my skinny. Got my head of myself. Let me make sure I've got plenty of this down here before I put that mascara on because I don't want to try and fix that lower waterline after I put the mascara on. This is my AOA Studio Skinny Wand mascara that I love using on these lower lashes. 
And I've got that slightly, sparkly, slightly white, white pencil in the corner of both eyes. Now I'm going to put a lippy on. Now I've got all this pretty shiny duochrome kind of purpley stuff going on up here and the gold. So I'm going to use the, let's see, do I want to use this one? This is kind of a purpley. But I've also got that purpley one that, where'd it go? Let's see, where'd it go? Is that it? Nope. It was the kind of purpley one. That was pinky with a slightly, yeah, fuchsia pearl with a blue. Yeah, I think this one, because that's a fairly light eye. This one's a little dark. At least for my attitude today. And if you want, you can still set spray it down. I'm going to get my Wet n Wild Rose. Yes, my newest, my newest Dollar Tree fan, yes. It's got all kinds of lace on the side, on the edges and all that. It's really a cute fan. They put this, they put some of these out for Mother's Day coming up. The other one that I've got is just kind of got the raw edges, no lace. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Full face of creams. Tell me what you think. Now, I'm going to be doing a few more of these as I go along. I've got some other cream makeups that I want to play with. Yes, my hair is a wreck, but hey, with this hairstyle, who knows? Who could tell? If you like what you saw, leave me a thumbs up if you're feeling generous. If you don't like what you saw, leave me a message. Tell me what you didn't like. If you have specific colors, I will see if I have them and you can request them. We'll see if they match up with what I've got. If you want to see a different kind of technique, period. Let me know. I just did one the other day that was a smoky eye for hooded eyes. And that seems to have gone pretty well. And that was a viewer request. I'm going to be doing a few more of these. I've got some more colors. I've got a few more ideas. And I will see you again. Just remember... I'm on a budget. I don't have bail money. Be good.